cutting the ABC's cloth. Very tough decisions needed to be made. The national broadcaster moves to cope with a funding freeze. And we're looking to be more local, we're looking to uh, invest in on-demand services. Job cuts up to 250, travel cuts by 25%, decentralising at least three quarters of program makers to be based away from its headquarters. Hello, I'm Paul Barry. Welcome to Media Watch. And after months of damaging cuts across the rest of the media, the axe has finally fallen on the ABC. And it's certainly not fat that's being sliced. ABC News will shed 74 jobs, while entertainment and specialist responsible for drama, kids' programmes and shows like Gruen, The Weekly and Mad as Hell will lose another 53. Meanwhile, everything the ABC broadcasts will be squeezed for cost savings to fund a budget shortfall and the shift to digital and on demand. After successive budget uh, reductions to the ABC, there's only so much that can be gained through efficiency and in the end, content will be affected. And the one thing I, I will say is that for any of the changes that we're making, Michael, there are people at the other end of that that are losing their jobs. Mm. We're doing everything we can to support them. It's, it's, it's pretty grim. Among the senior journalists choosing to go are RN business editor Cheryl Bagwell and former foreign correspondent Zoe Daniel. And those who may be forced to go include radio reporter Greg Borschman, chief rural reporter Dominic Schwartz, and the only dedicated arts reporter in news, Michaela Boland, whose position has been abolished. The national emergency broadcasting role has also been axed, despite the ABC's highly praised bushfire coverage, as has the job of chief economics correspondent, Emma Alberici, in the midst of a global recession. Her potential departure made front page news in Thursday's Australian to cheers from readers, and some 500 comments demanding more blood. No loss whatsoever. Clear the lot out. Keep going. Shut this ABC dinosaur down. The first program under the Act should be Media Watch, which is an expensive waste of time. So, how much will the cuts hurt you? Well, for starters, you'll only get 42 episodes a year of programmes like Four Corners and Media Watch instead of up to 45. Australian Story, already down to 35 episodes a year, will be forced to run up to four repeats. And Foreign Correspondent will be cut again, now down to 22 episodes. In 2016, it was making 30 eps a year. And already struggling on reduced budgets, those two programmes will also lose money and travel less. Meanwhile, ABC spending with independent producers will be cut by $5 million a year, or around 5%. Most of it lost from factual programming, which produces popular shows like War on Waste, Love on the Spectrum and Old People's Home for four-year-olds. So you will see less original TV on your screen and no new shows after 9.30pm. And that will leave a real gap, says Ivan Omani from production company In Films, which made the ABC's Revelation series on the Catholic Church. It's extremely concerning these cuts are going to come from Factual because it's one of the few places you can still pitch meaningful long-form programs. The successful website ABC Life, a regular target for ABC critics, is another casualty. Dumped and rebranded as ABC Local with the loss of nine journalists who helped bring a new, younger audience to the ABC. Fran Kelly's RN Breakfast will also suffer, losing two senior reporters. And the ABC's top-rating radio news bulletin at 7.45am will be axed to the dismay and anger of its many fans. On ABC Adelaide, Ali Clark read out listeners' texts. I rely so much on the 7.45 news bulletin. Um, I simply can't believe it's such a sad day. And on ABC Sydney, broadcaster Margaret Throsby was furious about the bulletin's loss. It's very important as a source of, of concentrated news. It doesn't have any ads or distractions or pretty pictures or anything. It's just news for 15 mm -hmm. minutes. On Twitter, Nine's cartoonist Cathy Wilcox asked... How can this be dispensable? Isn't this what the ABC is there for? And former broadcaster and columnist Mike Carlton called the axing... An act of infinite stupidity, almost a vandalism. According to one ABC radio journalist, the decision to cut the 15-minute bulletin, which has been on air for 80 years, but whose ratings have been falling, leaves staff morale at rock bottom. But, painful and unpopular as it undoubtedly is, former ABC editorial director Alan Sunderland says people are missing the point if they fail to focus on the bigger picture. The government cuts the ABC's funding yet again, blandly asserting that times are tough and we all need to live within our means. The public, who love and trust the ABC more than any other media outlet, express their anger, sadness and fear. 
And then, 30 seconds later, this moment of clarity and outrage dissipates as we all fall over each other to argue about which particular bit of the ABC should be cut and which should be saved. So why is the government squeezing the ABC, and indeed the CSIRO, when it needs to create jobs in the economy? And Qantas, for example, is sacking 6,000 staff. Challenged about the cuts on Thursday, Communications Minister Paul Fletcher and PM Scott Morrison insisted they are, in fact, a fantasy. The ABC's funding is rising. It's all laid out Can in the budget the papers. Uh, it's all laid out in the budget papers. Over a billion dollars. It's well over a billion dollars. There are no cuts. No further cuts. There are no further cuts because there are no cuts. ABC's funding is increasing every year. Looking at the raw figures, that is just about true. But, as the government's own numbers make clear, the ABC is getting less money when you take inflation and rising transmission costs into account. And, as Margaret Throsby told ABC Sydney... The ABC's operational budget, uh, funding will be more than 10% lower in 21-22 than it was in 2013. I mean, it's, it's as stark as that. And anyone who's been around the place for a few years will know that we've lost a 1,000 staff um, in the last six years. We're just down to the bone. The ABC's critics say the public broadcaster gets $1 billion a year, and that is more than enough. But it's actually much less than its rivals have to spend. In 2019, Seven West Media took in $1.55 billion from TV and the West Australian, while Nine earned $1.7 billion from TV and Metro newspapers, and News Corp and Foxtel had total revenues of around US $3.2 billion from Australian newspapers and pay TV, with most of that money, apart from Foxtel, ultimately coming from the public via advertising. And there's no doubt the ABC's budget has been cut, starting with $50 million a year haircut from Joe Hockey in 2014, despite that famous pre-election promise from the Prime Minister to be. No cuts to the ABC or SBS. There was then a further squeeze in Scott Morrison's 2018 budget, which handed out money to almost everyone else, and which Joe Hildebrand summed up as... Cash splash! That stripped the ABC of another $84 million of promised funding over three years by removing indexation. And, on a longer view, the ABC is also doing far more with less. Back in 1987, according to the government's latest efficiency review released last week, the ABC had 6,100 staff to run one TV channel and four radio networks. In 2018, it had 4,200 staff to run four TV channels, plus 12 national or capital city radio stations, 44 local radio stations, ABC News and ABC Online, and video streaming at ABC iView. And as ex-editorial director Alan Sunderland put it this week... If the ABC's funding had simply kept pace with inflation, it would have an extra couple of hundred million to play with instead of facing further cuts. But if its share of growing government revenue had stayed the same, it would have comfortably more than double its current budget. So why cut further? Well, the critics say everyone else in the media is suffering as ad revenues and print sales fall, so the ABC should suffer too. But if other media are cutting back, with local papers closing, regional TV bulletins going silent and Australian drama and documentaries disappearing, others argue we need a bigger ABC to fill the gap. So, where is the clamour to downsize coming from? Writing in Nine's Sydney and Melbourne papers, former ABC staff director Matt Peacock fumed... Since the Coalition was elected on a promise of no cuts, almost a quarter of its staff have been sacked, the result of an ongoing campaign of cuts and denigration by zealots and vested interests in the commercial media. And there's no doubt that campaign is real. It's led by politicians on the right of the Liberal Party, by Pauline Hanson and One Nation, who threatened to block legislation in the Senate unless ABC funding was cut, and by the IPA, which has long argued that the ABC should be privatised, and which tweeted last week... The ABC has been a chief cheerleader of dividing Australians through their relentless editorialising on identity politics. But News Corp's columnists and Sky News hosts and panellists have been even louder in their calls for cuts, telling us constantly that the ABC has been captured by left-wing activists and does not represent Australian values. I don't want political activism shoved down my throat, and that's what they do now. It is just wall-to-wall... -wall mad activism. An ABC that big and biased is a menace to democracy, stifling debate, putting rivals out of work. And just a reminder, you pay for this drivel. Poll after poll shows those perceptions of ABC bias are not shared by the public. 
The latest government efficiency review, for example, led by a former Foxtel CEO, reports the ABC is trusted by eight out of ten Australians. And it concludes of the ABC and SBS. While the national broadcasters are often the subject of criticism from the public and their competitors, they continue to play a vital role in Australian society. They are the most trusted news brands in Australia and they deliver unique and profound benefits to the Australian community. Those benefits were highlighted during the bushfire crisis, with the ABC the most used and trusted media source, and which helped push ABC online to the number one news website in Australia. But what if you don't like what the ABC is offering and object to your taxes having to pay for it? Like many readers of The Australian, viewers of Sky and the haters on Twitter. Seriously? We are paying over $1 billion a year for this continual crap on their ABC. The tide has turned. Now we just have to finish them off. Defund the ABC. The answer is our taxes often pay for things that give us no personal benefit. We pay for education, even if we don't have kids. We pay for welfare, even if we're never unemployed. And we pay for the arts, even if we only like sport. And the polls show 8 out of 10 people believe the ABC is valuable, and 7 out of 10 use it every week. As ABC chair Ida Buttrose argued last week... The ABC has not only helped shape Australia, we are the national voice that unites us. It's about democracy. Without the ABC, we would have a balkanised and parochial bunch of broadcasters that are in danger of being compromised by profit and more intent on dividing than unifying. So, with the latest round of cuts bedded down, what comes next for the public broadcaster? According to Alan Sunderland, funding will come under even more pressure as the ABC adjusts to a digital future. For over a decade now, the ABC has been able to ride two horses at once, maintaining all of its traditional output while expanding into new areas. That has become increasingly unsustainable. More long-running programs will come under threat. More traditional platforms will stagnate or be neglected to help pay for growth in online, on-demand and mobile content. In other words, last week's cuts are just the beginning. The ABC's new five-year plan, drowned out by the job losses, is all about quality over quantity and a shift to personalised digital experiences. And some of that is already happening. ABC News boss Gavin Morris said last week that audio content made for on-demand, both on ABC platforms and in-home devices like Amazon's Alexa and Google's Assistant, is set to triple. Digital listening is still small relative to broadcast, but it's growing fast as people shift their habits to the ABC Listen app, in-home devices and connected cars. In 2017, about 15% of us were listening to audio in our cars via a mobile device. Today, 40% of us are. The five-year plan foreshadows the loss of at least one of the ABC's TV channels. But that alone may not be enough, and more legacy programmes may well have to go, especially if Alan Sunderland is right with this warning. I confidently predict that in the next budget, the government will once again cut the ABC's budget even further. So, buckle up, there's more turbulence ahead. And a merger of some kind with SBS can no longer be ignored. But as the Prime Minister reminded us last week, the ABC is not the only media organisation under the cosh. I've got to say, if you're working in the media industry today, if you're a journalist today, the safest place for you to be is actually at the ABC because your revenue is guaranteed in that, in that industry uh, by the government. For journalists working in so many other media companies, um, they are doing it really tough. And, uh, and I think uh, we need to keep that in perspective. Perspective is indeed important, but why squeeze out more journalists and information sources when the market is already doing it so well? Last week, presses around Australia shut down for good as more than 100 local newspapers ceased print production. Paper copies of The Morning Bulletin and Gladstone Observer have rolled out for the last time. Tomorrow, The Queensland Times, our oldest newspaper, will go to print for the final time. The Daily has delivered our region a local paper for four decades, and The Gympie Times has been printing for more than a century. The advocates transitioning to a digital-only platform. Grafton's Daily Examiner also ceasing its print run. Last one today. Last one today. More than 800 jobs will be lost across News Corp's regional group, and for journalists remaining, there's also bad news. We're told News Corp will close most of its regional offices and force reporters to work from home. Despite promising to continue to serve those communities, not even the shopfront will remain. Earlier this month, the company reportedly cut some 65 journalists from Metro titles, The Herald Sun and The Daily Telegraph, and another 13 at The Australian. 
The Seven Network also shed journalists in Adelaide last week as part of a brutal cost-cutting campaign at Seven West Media. And across the country, we estimate that at least 2,000 media jobs have been cut this year alone. In times like this, many argue that Australia needs public broadcasting more than ever. Sadly, the government and the ABC's noisy band of critics do not agree. Which is why, as Nine's papers reported at the weekend, the government turned down the ABC's offer to spend $10 million on new jobs in the regions if ABC funding cuts were restored. In my opinion, that tells you a lot about the political environment. That's all from us tonight. There's more on our website. And don't forget Media Bytes every Thursday on your favourite social media platform. But for now, until next week, goodbye. Mm -hmm.